coming soon to a PDF near you. A tome of dark and forbidden arts. The Contronomicon! So it's been a while. Uh, but I want to reassure you all that I have not uh, forsaken crazy projects. Uh, so this is going to be the uh, the first in a handful of videos where I want to uh, uh, talk about some of the projects I've been working on uh, over the past few months of my accidental YouTube sabbatical. The first one I want to talk about is the brand new version of my contrabassoon fingering chart. Now, if you play contrabassoon, uh, hopefully at some point or another you've come across the original version of my fingering chart, uh, but it was pretty outdated. So it was uh, well past time to update it. And as you can probably tell from the introduction of this video, I also took the opportunity to give the, uh, the fingering chart a more interesting name. So instead of just contrabassoon fingering chart, now I'm going to call it the Contronomicon, because somehow no one else seems to have used that term before, so now I am. Towards the end of the video, I'd like to go more in-depth on the, uh, the sections of the Contronomicon, what's new, what's been changed. Uh, but before we get into any of that, I'd like to go over some of the most important points uh, for those of you who maybe don't want to listen to me ramble on and just want to download it. Firstly, this is not the one true Contrabassoon fingering chart. To the extent that such a thing might be possible on an instrument like the saxophone or even the bassoon, on contrabassoon, the uh, variety, of uh, the inconsistencies between instruments and makers uh, makes that completely impossible. So some of these fingerings may work great for you, others may not work at all. Um, nevertheless, I still think it's valuable to get this information out there. Contrabassoonists spend so much of our time uh, reinventing the wheel because there's just not information out there. We see, or uh, we're asked to do something that we haven't been asked to do before, and we have no choice other than to sit down for an hour and try to figure it out. So, I figure some information is better than none, and hopefully, um, more people, more contrabassoonists will start uh, sharing their tricks that they've uh, gathered over the years. And secondly, just like the original version of this fingering chart, the Contronomicon is being released uh, through a Creative Commons license, uh, specifically Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike. Now, if, uh, if you need to know exactly what this allows you to do and doesn't allow you to do, uh, you can find that out at creativecommons.org. Uh, but the, the short version is that almost anything non-nefarious that you might want to do with a fingering chart, you can do with this one. If you want to download it and email it to all of your friends, you can do that. If you want to print it out and hand it out to your bassoon studio, you can do that. If you want to burn it in protest of composers writing above high B-flat for contrabassoon, you can do that. If you want to have the uh, Appendix F tattooed on your back, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do that. If you want to take the PDF to a printer and have it professionally printed onto leather-bound editions and then sell those for a profit, believe it or not, you can do that. Pretty much, as long as you're crediting me and you're not trying to copyright it yourself, you're probably okay. But once again, creativecommons.org for more information. And finally, while this chart is being released for free, uh, it did involve a lot of work. So, if you are in a um, comfortable financial situation, you've downloaded the chart and you think it's valuable and would like to contribute to help uh, future versions of this chart come out, uh, you can do so via PayPal or Venmo at the, um, the addresses on your screen or in the description below. But once again, it's free, so if you can't do that, you're under no pressure or obligation. Okay, so uh, let's dig a little bit into the content and the, uh, the changes uh, for this version of the fingering chart. 
Getting the chart is extremely easy. All you have to do is go to my personal website, me.subcontrabassoon.com, and click on the Contrabassoon Fingering Chart link. Alternatively, there is a direct link to the PDF in the description below. The, uh, the original version uh, was about 25 pages long and included uh, some, uh, some introductory material, including a few pages about range of the contrabassoon. Uh, it had a main fingering chart, a uh, trill fingering chart, and then some appendices with some extra information. The uh, Contronomicon, the new version, is nearly 50 pages long and includes all of that information, uh, plus a quarter tone fingering chart, a tremolo fingering chart, some multiphonics, and a uh, rather large appendix talking about multiphonics in depth. And a lot of what's common between the two versions has been uh, reorganized or restated for the, the Contronomicon. So at the beginning, we have uh, an introduction. Uh, a lot of the same uh, material I've already talked about at the beginning of this video, uh, just in printed form. I also talk briefly about notation uh, because I know I've gotten a few questions about my use of Atava clefs for contrabassoon, which is somewhat unusual. Uh, so this just kind of spells out the way that I notate contrabassoon, the way most people notate contrabassoon, and why pretty much either one is completely fine as long as one is used consistently. Uh, and, and then at the end of this page, there's just a warning for composers uh, that, uh, s that this resource was mainly designed for contrabassoonists and to use common sense before including anything in this chart in a, uh, a work. Because just because something's in this chart doesn't mean it's good and it's uh, effective in all contexts. Uh, this is especially true with a lot of the tremolos and quarter tones, things that might be fine if it's buried in orchestral texture, but I'll, if you include a solo with it, you might be in for a rough time. Following that, we have two pages about uh, just the range of the contrabassoon in general. And if you're a composer, this is probably gonna be the most useful two pages. Uh, talking about the, the, the various registers of the contrabassoon and when they are expected and when they are, more, perhaps more importantly, when they're not expected. So almost anything an orchestral contrabassoonist will be expected to be able to do is on this first page here, the introductory, basic, and orchestral ranges. Uh, so anything beyond that that you might see in the chart, you've entered into solo, experimental, or crazy territory. And then I talk a little bit about my setup. So uh, if you have a contrabassoon uh, pretty similar to mine, you might have reason to think that these fingerings might be more effective than if you, for example, have a fast system Fox or uh, something drastically different. Uh, this is also where I talk about the, the basic key work that I have and that I use in the chart. Um, and then if uh, there's a, um, a note that Appendix A talks about uh, key work variance and depth. So if you're at college and you have access to a contrabassoon and it has a key on it that you don't know what it does, probably check Appendix A and there's a good chance uh, that you'll find out why it's there and what it could be useful for. Next up, we have the, the main fingering chart. So this includes uh, my standard fingerings and a few alternate fingerings uh, for the, the range of the contrabassoon that I think is possible to play without putting your teeth directly on the reed. That includes uh, the orchestral range and the, uh, the altissimo ranges. Uh, but as I talked about in the range section, the upper altissimo is of very dubious use, uh, but uh, it's included here mainly for people to work with because just because I can't get much use out of this register doesn't mean that no one can. Now, I made a few changes in the new version 
Uh, I've moved all of the extreme range and resultant tone fingerings to separate sections. Uh, I didn't want those to clutter up the, the main fingering chart because they are quite different. The original version, for example, started on a multiphonic low G was the first thing in the fingering chart, which probably wasn't the best way to, to start a fingering chart that might be used by uh, beginners or uh, people less experienced at contrabassoon. The other change I made is I tweaked the colors a bit uh, to make it uh, generally more accessible uh, in black and white. So if you were to print this off and not, and if you don't want to spend a whole bunch of extra money to have the trill keys be red, uh, it should still be legible in black and white. Following that, we have the trill fingering chart, which includes whole step and half step trills. Uh, from low B flat uh, up to uh, what I'm calling the lower altissimo register. So that's A flat above uh, treble clef. And towards the end, uh, some of the whole, uh, the whole step fingerings are not uh, included because I don't have a fingering for those, but I did include a blank spot. If you find one of those fingerings and want to send it to me, that would be greatly appreciated. Next, we have the first entirely new section of the, the fingering chart, a tremolo fingering chart. This includes minor and major third tremolos through the orchestral range. So from low B flat up to high C sharp. Uh, I didn't find any, and I didn't spend much time looking for any uh, tremolos in the altissimo register. Now, most of these have pretty big caveats or limitations to them, which you can see notated below uh, each fingering, uh, either clumsy or poor tone, or some of them are just impractical. Nevertheless, I did find some fingerings that were both decent and not entirely intuitive, like you couldn't play just with regular fingerings. Uh, like you probably don't need a tremolo fingering chart to, to know that uh, a tremolo from A1 to C2 can be played just by tremoloing fingers one and two on the right hand, but some of these are much less obvious. Another entirely new section is the quarter tone fingering chart. Uh, this covers the from the, the mid range of the instrument up to the upper or sorry up to the lower altissimo. Notably excluded is uh, most of the notes in the low the lowest register. So the, the contrabassoon, like the bassoon, most of the tone holes that control the lowest register are coupled through an automatic mechanism. So there's, for example, there's no way to close the low D tone hole without closing the low E tone hole. That makes quarter tones in this low register uh, pretty much impractical. The, the only way that... Um, you can do, a, or the only way that I've found to do a lot of these quarter tones is by half depressing a key. So just slightly pressing a key open. And this is, of course, very difficult to do at anything resembling uh, speed. And your uh, the, the difference between an in-tune quarter tone and uh, just a regular uh, chromatic pitch can be like half a millimeter. Any composers that are still here, I really strongly suggest not writing for quarter tones uh, uh, in the lowest tritone of the contrabassoon's range. Uh, but beyond, above that, there are fingerings um, that, with the usual woodwind caveats of these instruments are not designed for quarter tones, and you're going to get a variety of uh, timbral and intonation deficiencies, uh, also technical deficiencies. And then finally, we have uh, the extreme range fingering charts. Uh, 
that were in the original version included in the main fingering chart, but here have been split out. So we have the extreme altissimo chart, um, uh, which includes notes that I've personally only been able to able to play with my teeth directly on the reed. So, so with the with the teeth rather than the lips, and of course it sounds pretty terrible, and there's not much reason I can think of to write the contrabassoon in this register. I mean, these notes are legitimately higher than notes that you could safely write for bassoon. Uh, but if there's anyone crazy out there who wants to do some uh, experimenting, these might be uh, a good place to start. And finally, the resultant tone fingering charts. Now, uh, these are similar to uh, the bassoon also has fingerings that allow you to simulate notes below the range of the instrument. Uh, these are called various things, subharmonics, pedal tones. Uh, I prefer the term resultant tone because acoustically that's what's happening. There is a multiphonic that uh, produces two pitches that work together to create the um, uh, difference tones that build up a harmonic series based upon a note below the range of the, the contrabassoon. These are very uh, sensitive, very uh, dubious in quality, and uh, probably aren't going to work unmodified on instruments uh, even slightly dissimilar from this instrument. And finally, the part of the video that took by far the most time, the multiphonics. So uh, for those of you who aren't woodwind players or are uh, haven't gotten into very many extended techniques yet, multiphonic is simply the sound that is created when a woodwind uh, uses a fingering that creates two different fundamental pitches at the same time. Uh, for some complicated acoustical reasons, these do not sound at all like chords, but as kind of cacophonous uh, uh, 1990s modem sounds. <laughs> Contrabassoon doesn't have quite as many multiphonics that I've been able to find as, for example, the bassoon. The tone hole geometry on contrabassoon is quite a bit different than on bassoon. So on bassoon, you have all of these uh, narrow, angled, long tone holes that are uh, necessary to for the instrument to be able to be uh, played by human hands, whereas on contrabassoon, They've abandoned any pretext of the instrument being able to be played by human hands and everything's covered. So they use these uh, short perpendicular tone holes, um, which limits your multiphonic options. Uh, everything in these four pages should be considered extremely preliminary. And beginning to wrap things up, we have the beginning of the appendices. Appendix A is probably the most useful appendix. It goes over some common and uncommon key work variations. The contrabassoon is less standardized than, the, than most other orchestral woodwinds. It's more common to see these weird keys that various makers have added to address certain deficiencies in contrabassoon technique. At the end of this appendix, I also talk briefly about the contraforte keywork. Appendix B covers uh, uh, something that I think isn't discussed enough about contrabassoon, and that is the half hole mechanism. So on bassoon, for certain octaves and uh, you know higher harmonics as well, we half cover the uh, the first finger on the left hand. So roll it down to leak that tone hole slightly uh, to serve as a makeshift harmonic vent. On contrabassoon, we can't do that because we don't have a tone hole for the left hand. We have a uh, key. So instead, the contrabassoon has an automatic mechanism that 
kind of does the same thing, but not fully or in not as elegantly. Um, so Appendix B covers some uh, ways in which you can adjust the amount of or how this half-hole mechanism works uh, because depending on your contrabassoon, it may need to leak slightly more or slightly less in order to work well for all of the notes it needs to work for. Appendix C outlines a slight modification I made to, to this instrument to enable me to use the water key more easily uh, because on this particular instrument there are a handful of notes that really benefit from the use of the water key. Uh, even though that key wasn't added to the instrument with any musical purpose in mind. Appendix D outlines a method for making a uh, inexpensive and effective low A extension for a uh, contrabassoon using uh, cardboard mailing tubes, while uh, Appendix E covers uh, lower extensions that I've made. Now, in the original version of uh, my fingering chart, uh, Appendix E went into depth on making um, these lower extensions out of cardboard and PVC pipe. I've come to think that that's probably not uh, wise. I, I think it probably uh, puts some uh, too much pressure on the instrument, uh, these low extensions, and if you're not if you don't use them very carefully, you could easily damage something. So instead of that, I instead just including some dimensions that I have used for lower extensions uh, that I have 3D printed. With 3D printing, you can make the extensions lighter uh, than you can with uh, PVC pipe and uh, cardboard, Surprising, perhaps surprisingly. Uh, but those PVC uh, bins weigh quite a bit. And a completely new uh, appendix is Appendix F, where I go in depth on uh, multiphonics because there's still a lot of uh, confusion out there, even among uh, woodwind players, uh, about what multiphonics are, why they happen. Um, and I wanted to try to try to fill in the gap right now there's a lot of uh, multiphonics information that is clearly uh, designed for uh, physicists and mathematicians and there's a lot of multiphonics information that's kind of you know woodwind woo you know just well these are magic fingerings that you know you do this fingering and this weird sound comes out isn't that cool it's like so I wanted to find something in the middle that would be accessible to musicians, but not include, uh, uh, but go a little bit more in depth on how they're actually produced. Uh, this is, uh, I will say this appendix is a little outside my comfort zone from a writing uh, standpoint. So if uh, if you happen to be a multiphonics expert and read this appendix and have any suggestions, improvements, or corrections, please feel free to reach out. I would love to talk to you. Anyway, that was an overview of the my new contrabassoon fingering chart, the Contronomicon. Uh, I do hope if you have uh, uh, any possible use for it that you'll download it and uh, uh, give it a try. Uh, this is one of the big projects I've been working on uh, the past few months, but not the only one by a long shot. Uh, so I hope to have some more videos soon detailing uh, some of those other projects. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a great day and I'll uh, see you soon. Mm -hmm.